Hi, this is Pastor Lorfeld, and I am pleased to come to you and bring you news that we will be once again resuming worship services at our regularly scheduled times. Things will be a little bit different now. We will be having to space out a little bit more. And so I'd like to just go over a few of these. I'll be meeting together with the elders to hammer out some details and just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, but I wanted you to have a, a heads up as to what to expect. Uh, first, uh, last week there was quite a lot of uh, activity. Our district, along with the Minnesota North District, along with a couple other Lutheran church bodies, the Evangelical Lutheran Synod, uh, the Wisconsin Synod, Minnesota District, uh, also the Association of Free Lutheran Churches, the Lutheran Brethren, and then also uh, the bishops and archbishop of the Catholic churches here in Minnesota, uh, all together uh, tried to uh, have a discussion with our governor. Uh, fortunately, uh, after some pressure, uh, the governor uh, finally had some discussions and was they were able to come to a consensus. Now, I want to be very clear. The church, when it comes to its worship, that is a matter of the right-hand kingdom. The, we say right-hand kingdom, left-hand kingdom. Left-hand kingdom is the kingdom of the law. That's the kingdom of the, the government, of, of civic rule. And, and we do want to honor and obey it as much as we can, uh, so long as we are not disobeying God, uh, that authority. When it comes to our worship, however, um, that's really a matter of the kingdom of the right. Now, there are, of course, there are some things like, uh, for example, fire code uh, that, that we do apply uh, to our worship space. But when it comes to our worship itself, we want to make sure that that is something that we say that the, the kingdom of the left really does not uh, overrule how we do things. So what I'm going to say here is first, uh, while I'm glad that our governor was willing to speak to our church leaders, I should also point out that he simply does not have the authority uh, to speak in terms of dictating how our worship is to be. With that said, we want to be good neighbors, and we want to look out for our neighbors' health during this time. Um, coronavirus hasn't gone away. Uh, it's still around. There are still new cases in the state of Minnesota. Things have been pretty quiet around here, and we thank the Lord for that. But we would also like to be cautious. And we understand that you would want to be cautious as well. So we're going to be implementing a number of of steps, number of procedures, a uh, number of different things we'll be doing a little bit differently to make sure that we are cautious towards our neighbor. Um, not that we are scared of our neighbor, but we want to make sure that we're caring for them and not uh, needlessly uh, putting our neighbor in danger. So first of all, um, those that are in high risk categories, uh, that, that includes those that are uh, over 65 of age and older, uh, those that have underlying health conditions, moderate to severe asthma, heart conditions, respiratory conditions, um, those who are obese, uh, and as well as those who have kidney or liver uh, medical conditions are, are, are asked to, to take a look at least at uh, the health risks that congregating together with other people uh, does pose. Uh, we want to make sure that you have information available to you. We'll be sending a link uh, in in our uh, newsletter along with, with some descriptions from the CDC uh, just so that you have information. I will not ever say to someone, you cannot come to church. But at the same time, we do understand if you want to exercise caution, know that uh, we, we love you and we are praying for you and we want to continue to minister to you. And if that means that it's got to be more individualized, it's got to be you know, either the phone or bringing communion to you in person, uh, that's something that we can do 
as well. Uh, so don't feel pressure just because we're opening to come. Uh, we want you to be safe. So the second thing that we'll be doing is we'll be spacing out. Uh, we've heard lots of social distancing. I, I prefer physical distancing, the, the term physical distancing, because that's what we're going to do. We are going to keep households six feet apart. Actually, we're going to be having uh, two rows blocked off for every one that is open. One household per, per row, unless it's one or two people on one end of a pew and then another person on the other end of the pew. If you can keep six feet between each household, then we can have more than one person or one more, more than one household per pew. Uh, but we're going to also cap our occupancy in the in the sanctuary in the in the nave. Uh, that's what the where all the seats are. It's called the nave. We're going to cap that at one quarter capacity, twenty five percent of what the fire code says. Uh, we have overflow room though available. We have overflow flow room available both in the narthex and also in the downstairs fellowship room. So uh, if we do run above that capacity, we have the ability to extend into other areas and meet uh, with what the state also wants. Again, I'm the way we're approaching this way I'm approaching this is that we are going to use our Christian freedom to go uh, to, to meet or even exceed uh, what the state wants. Uh, not because we have to, but because we want to be good neighbors. So another thing that we'll be doing that is different, our services will be shorter. We'll be singing only one hymn. We'll be singing less in the liturgy. Uh, the time will be shorter. I will preach shorter sermons, God willing. Uh, we will also uh, be handing out bulletins. Uh, there will be no hymnal, so the bulletins will have everything in them. We will also be collecting the offering at the entrance of the church, or entrance to the sanctuary area, entrance to the nave, just as you get in the doors. Uh, we will not be passing the plate. If you forget, we'll have a plate out there after the service, just in case. Uh, also, communion will be right at the end. And when we get to the end of communion, you'll be dismissed. Now, if you have things in your in your pew, you can, of course, go back and get them. But uh, you are encouraged. Uh, if you have no other things in your pew, I'd encourage you not to bring extra stuff into the church. Uh, if you're able to, uh, you simply, at that time, just exit. I know it's going to be weird. We want to... Uh, socialize. We want to get close to one another. And, and church is one of those times where we, we get to see people we haven't seen for a while. We want to congregate together. Uh, during this time, we, we have to be careful. And so we have to keep separated. So we're going to discourage uh, that kind of after service socializing. We're going to encourage you uh, to simply go home uh, or go in the car, uh, be with your family. Um, it's hard uh, it's not normal. Uh, this isn't a new normal. It's not normal, and we're looking forward to getting back, but we're not there yet. One other note is that we'll be opening the church doors uh, for those that will be attending the services only 15 minutes ahead of time before the service. Uh, we'll have ushers in the in the church as well as elders and, and our musicians. So we're already going to have a few people in, but we want to minimize the amount of people that are gathering in the church. Uh, the less time we, we spend in a confined uh, space, in an indoor space, the better. Uh, just because they're what experts, and I certainly am not one, are telling us is that, uh, that this virus is being spread uh, through breath, through aerosolized uh, droplets and so forth. So we want to uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, minimizing the risk as much as we possibly can. Uh, like I said, the elders and I will be discussing this more in detail tonight at our meeting. But I wanted to get this out to you ahead of time, just so that you have some idea. And I will come uh, back uh, tomorrow with an additional message uh, with some more details. We'll also be sending out. A newsletter that should have all this information for you uh, and I, I look forward I look forward to uh, being able to see you once again in person 
And until then, the Lord bless and keep you. Amen.